Hi uh, guys, Mark from Dynex Hobby again. Uh, today I'm going to introduce the Impulse 2 uh, dynamic balance um, unit. Uh, the balancer is actually um, a plug and play system, very simple and easy to use and I'll show you how to set it up and get it going. Alrighty, so when you receive the Impulse, um, you'll get the standard USB cable, an accelerometer, Impulse itself and there are optional extras uh, such as the um, laser module or the infrared sensor. Um, so we'll go ahead and, um, and assemble the, the device. Uh, first thing to do is to attach the USB cable to the USB port on Impulse. So that it's a simple plug-in procedure. And um, you want to connect the free end to a spare USB port on your laptop or PC. So I plug that in. Uh, the very first time you plug that in, Windows will uh, recognize the impulse and actually go ahead and automatically install the drivers um, internally. Um, that won't take too long, it might take a minute or so to get that up and running. Um, to know that your impulse is working normally, um, you'll see a very bright um, green LED light appear. So once that is all connected and set up in Windows, uh, next thing would be to um, connect the, um, the sensors. So the standard uh, accelerometer that comes with the kit is this uh, accelerometer here. And the way it's connected um, is that the black wire uh, faces the top label on the, um, on the impulse. So if I was to connect this to the impulse, uh, to the accelerator port number one, I would plug that in like so, so that the black wire faces the top label. Uh, connecting the uh, laser module is the same kind of procedure. Again, the black wire faces the top part of the impulse label. So I'll connect that into the IR sensor port. <clears throat> now as soon as you plug in the um, the laser sensor module, you'll see the, um, the laser module itself and an LED, a red LED showing. Um, when I actually move my hand in front of the laser module, another red LED will illuminate, indicating a, um, a signal being detected. Now the very first thing to do uh, to set up the impulse in Windows is to set up the sound settings. Uh, so in the sound settings uh, Windows um, environment, click on the sound control panel. <clears throat> um, and then go to recording. And you'll see the impulse show up as a USB audio uh, device. So you want to click on that and then properties. So then drag that over. And so we want to click on to levels. So you can actually set the sensitivity of impulse by setting the, um, the microphone input level. Uh, generally, I leave it at 50% or thereabouts, but you can actually increase the level up to 100% if you want high sensitivity. But just to keep in mind that if you do go to a higher sensitivity, you might introduce a lot more noise um, in your measurement. So once that is set, uh, click on advanced and you need to set the, um, the channels that you're actually going to be recording. Now this is actually very important. Uh, generally when you open this for the first time, you may see this set as a one channel system. Now if you were to set it as one channel, the impulse won't work correctly. In other words, you'll see a vibration signal on channel one, but you won't see uh, the pulse signal for channel two. And that I get a lot of questions from people out in the community about that and just keep in mind that you really do need to set this as a two channel system. So I'll click on that tab and click on two channel um, at 16 bit at 44 100 hertz recording rate. Um, once that is set click on OK and OK to that and then you can close the settings window. So from here, I can click on the Donex Hobby application and click I agree to the warning and you'll see the main menu. So on the main menu, we wanna click on the advanced vibration meter and it's probably the easiest way to test the system when you receive it. Now just a, um, a note that um, the impulse is actually tested twice 
uh, once during production and um, another time just before shipping. So we do test the system to ensure that it's working correctly before it's sent to you. So when you receive it, um, a simple way to check it is to um, look at the advanced vibration meter. Uh, for this particular test, I'm just going to reduce the sample rate just so it's easy to see the full wave. So I reduce that and then I'm going to click on devices, click on the micro, microphone USB audio system and then click OK. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on start. So that is set up, ready to go. So the first thing um, to do is you can actually grab the accelerometer and give the accelerometer a bit of a wiggle side to side and when you do that you'll see a very very you know rough sine wave appear and if you see that then you know that the accelerometer sensor is working fine the second thing to do is to grab the laser sensor place it on a table um, and then you can wave your finger in front of the sensor so when I do that you will see a pulse appear for channel 2 like so. So if you see um, those two uh, signals appear on the screen, then you know everything is working normally. Alrighty, so I want to actually discuss um, how to set up the laser module or infrared sensor. <clears throat> I had a lot of questions about how to set this up correctly and, you know, and some of the pitfalls associated with having um, a correct um, um, configuration. <clears throat> So I have um, my um, two-plane rotor system set up on the bench and I have my laser module uh, pointing towards the plane one. Now on plane one, I've actually got a couple of different um, variations of markings on here. So I've actually got a, um, a dark face with a white line marked on it. And I've also got a, um, a black marker, which is placed onto the shaft. And I've tried different, you know, tests in different locations to see whether, um, which gives me the best results. <clears throat> uh, so I'll go through that um, and actually demonstrate some of the pitfalls associated with setting this up. So what I'll do is uh, <clears throat> I'll run up the rotor to speed. Um, so it's not a very high speed. All right, so at the moment, I have the um, laser sensor set up on plane one, pointing towards the, the white marker on the dark face there. So it's ramping up the speed, and you can see that the, um, the RPM seems to be fluctuating a little bit. And it's to do with the fact that, um, you know, the, the pulse seems to be a bit, um, seems to oscillate a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate the laser module a bit around a bit more. Okay, so I hit a sweet spot. Now when I rotate it, you'll see that the RPM um, stabilizes and the speed seems to be in line with more what I was expecting, around about 80 hertz. Now I can check that on the, um, the frequency meter. If I move the, the marker over here, over to the, actually I might zoom up on the frequency curve to that. Click on that, press play, and well, I might press pause for that just to demonstrate. If I click on this, you'll see that the biggest peak which is pretty much where the imbalance is, is at 80 hertz. And that matches well with the RPM. So you know that that location is working really well um, for the laser module. So hopefully that um, explains the setup. I'm just gonna ramp that down now. I hope that explains the setup for the uh, laser module and um, go from there. All right guys, just one final note uh, for our users in the European region or any region that uses, uh, for example, a, a comma as a um, number separator. Uh, so generally the way the um, impulse or the, um, the software works 
is it actually requires a decimal separator um, for the number format. Um, so for example, in the US, um, they might have a 1.474, for example, but in some parts of Europe, that might be a 1.474. The comma can cause a bit of a problem when it goes to the analysis. Um, it may not see it as a decimal, it might see it as um, a full number. So for example, that might read the number as 1,474. So to ensure that um, impulse works correctly, we need to have the number format to be 1.474. Uh, so to set that correctly in Windows, you'll need to go to the, um, the uh, regional settings. Um, so in the clock and region tab in Windows 10, you can click on change date time, number format, then click on additional settings, and you should see um, this panel. Uh, generally, if it's set to uh, US, um, the decimal symbol will, will appear there um, in the correct sort of format. Then click uh, apply, uh, okay, okay, and you should be ready to go. So just keep a note that if you're trying to perform a balance um, and your uh, Windows is actually using a comma as a decimal separator. It may not work correctly, so if you reset the regional settings, it should be fine. So there you have it, guys. Um, it's a simple uh, setup procedure for the Impulse system. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them below, and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you.